Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. I hope that you are having a great week thus far. And uh, today we're going to be looking at James chapter 4, uh, verses 11 and 12. If you want to follow along in your Bible, you can go ahead and do that. I'll be reading from the ESV, the English Standard Version, if you want to follow along. Uh, that's where we're going to be today. And today we're talking about a topic that frequently finds tension in the Christian life. And that is the tension between improper judging and proper use of accountability and rebuke. And these two things constantly live in tension. And I feel like so often in a sermon or a word for the day or a devotional that I share, if there's something that, that touches on judging others being negative, there's always the pushback of, well, where does accountability and godly rebuke fit in? And not that I can fully do that justice in a short word for the day video, but I hope today looking at this passage and reflecting on how James got here and making a few distinctions, we'll start the process of differentiating those two in your mind so that we can live uh, consistent with the way God has called us to. So James chapter four, verses 11 and 12 says this. It says, do not speak evil against one another. So I wanna pause here for a second before we read the rest of this. Um, do not speak is how he starts. If you go back uh, to the beginning of basically chapter three for uh, almost two full chapters and, and, and he'll continue with even some of how we use our speech. So basically, all of chapter three and four are related to our improper use of our words in our speech. And so, so we'll use that as the underlying uh, kind of context that he talks about judging others. Uh, it's by the words that we use. And he specifically says, do not speak evil against one another, brothers. Going back to the verse here. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. But he says, but there's only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and destroy, but who are you to judge your neighbor? Now, this is, again, a challenging one for us to sort through because we understand that at times we're encouraged to, to challenge our brothers and sisters in Christ and challenge where they may be living in sin or inconsistent with the life that God has for them. But notice the number of times that evil is mentioned in this. Don't speak evil. Don't judge evil. There, there's a negative connotation to all of this. And, and more than that, he says, hey, when, when we get into the place of evil and uh, of judging in an evil way, bringing condemnation and anger towards others as we point out the things in their life, did you notice what he says we do? We want to put ourselves in the place of God. He says there's only one lawgiver and judge. It's the one who can save and destroy. That is our, uh, our Lord and Savior. It's, it's the God of the universe who is in that place. And if we're not careful, we can find ourselves looking into the lives of others pretending to be the God of the universe, knowing the perfect way that they're to live, knowing what is right and wrong for them in their specific life. And he says, there's only one God of the universe and you're not it because there's only one. And so how do we differentiate between these two? And I want to just make a few definitions that I think might be helpful. Because if we talk about proper, righteous, godly, biblical accountability, which is us pulling someone aside and saying, hey, I don't know if you see this in your life, but here's something that I see and it might be a sin for this reason or that. I think that we have to think about the motivation. If it's good biblical accountability and rebuke, then the motivation is to help that person, to bring growth and health to them, to help draw them closer to the life that God has for them. To, to pare that down some more, I think accountability is person before problem. We care about the person so much that we have to bring up the problem. But when we get into improper judging, then often that is motivated by the desire to be right, the desire to tell them they're wrong, to bring condemnation and anger and judgment to them. To draw a similar comparison, I think that puts the problem before the person. We want to use the problem to beat up the person and, and wave it before them. And there's, there's likely more explanation we can dig into and more understanding of this, but I think we have to challenge ourselves. What's the motive? Are we really trying to be biblical when we have thoughts and judgments against other people as we share them with them? What's our motive? 
is the motive to make us feel like we're more righteous and holy because we don't do those things, to tell them how they're wrong, to put them down, or is the desire to bring them closer to the one judge, the one king of the universe, to draw them closer, to lift them up as a person, try and help them live more of the life that God has for them. Because if it's not that, then we're speaking evil against one another. We're judging incorrectly, and we're forgetting that there's only one proper judge of the universe, and it's not us. So today, I hope that, that this helps you begin that process of sorting through, and I hope that, that you challenge yourself to run your thoughts as it pertains to others through the filter. What's my motivation here? Am I trying to point it out to make them feel bad, to make myself feel better, or is my heart here really to help them come closer to the life that Jesus has for them? And if so, am I the right person to share it? Is this the right time to share it? Is this the right way to share it? And really begin to take a posture of humility, pointing to the fact that there's only one judge and lawgiver, and it's the God of the universe. Hope you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.